Welcome to this video which looks at Land Guardian integration with SolarWinds Server and Application Monitor. My name is Darren Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netport. I'm now logged on to my SolarWinds Server and Application Monitor. So let me show you a couple of examples of how you can use Land Guardian data within this application. So the first one, I want to do some troubleshooting. I want to take a look at the server. So it's this Windows Server here. When I load up the next page, this is the uh, No Details page. Get lots of information about it, the server, the type of operating system, it's CPU load here, the disk volumes, memory is quite full at the moment. Further up at the top here, this data is coming from LangGuardian. So here's the traffic profile of this server. So it's a Microsoft file sharing traffic. And with these elements, you can drill down. You can keep drilling down the total to get more detail. So you click on the to client, drill down on that. And we'll get detail like this, the client, the server, what type of uh, action, so file read. So some somebody's copying files off finance share here and it looks like a lot of spreadsheets. You also got the date and time for that. Further down, we have the top serve files served up by this server. So it looks like somebody's uh, copying MP3 files off it as well. Again, you have the option to drill down and find out who is copying. So source IP there. This can also be a username. And also this server here is serving up web uh, must be running a website, it's serving up web pages over the last hour 1400, nearly four. Drill down on that, you can see which clients are connecting to it. So, a bunch of local clients connected to that server accessing some web pages. Let's go back to the home page. The next thing I want to show you here is the LangGuardian search page embedded within the server and application monitor. So we can do bandwidth troubleshooting, forensics, file activity, or web activity. So in the first example, we've got another problem with a server. We're not quite sure what's wrong. Um, maybe CPU is high, maybe memory is high, usage is high. So what we can do is go to network forensics, type in the IP address of the server, the go button. Let's see what do we know about this. Here's its traffic profile here, so it actually looks like a lot of iTunes sharing traffic, some message traffic to it as well. It's accessing some websites. Um, it's also connecting to some webs another website through a proxy. Looks like spam email coming from it as well. And these are the files that it's serving up. So it's got some spreadsheets coming out of it. And for each of these blue links here, you can drill down and get further information. Let's go back to the user network search. And in the next example, on one of our file servers, some files have gone missing, they've been deleted, and we need to know what happened. So go to the file activity element here, type in, for example, forecast, some sales forecast file has gone missing, hit the go button. So we can change the time period here as well, it might be over you know, whatever could be custom time period. Maybe we need to look over a couple of days. I'm happy just the last hour because the call has just come in. So start drilling down on this. Here's the file that's been deleted at 1700. We need the username here. I need to find out who did this. So we just click the user button. And this resolves then it's actually Wendy Fagan here deleted that file and we've got the date and time. So if you want to track who's deleting files off your network, just go to the file activity um, search. Let's go back to user network search. And if you want to focus in on, on a user, that's also possible. So for example, the last user there, Windy, click username, type in our username here to be in. So Windy Fagan, that's her, click the go button. And these are all the websites that users accessed. You can then do some further analysis. You can drill down here on let's say, activity to the BBC. And you can see the URI as well. So it looks like some sort of football here that person was connecting to and you got the date and time. Finally, you could also do some bandwidth troubleshooting. So if you've maybe got servers in a remote location or maybe you want to focus in on what's happening on a WAN connection, go to the IP address search and put in a subnet. So you put in 192.168.0.0 slash 30, for example. So I wanted to see what's going to and from that subnet, which is remote. So we've got the mostly TCP traffic, that's fine. Some proxy traffic, web traffic. And with LangGuardian, if you've got proxies on your network, 
the Langardian can not only show who's connecting to your proxy, but what sites are being accessed. So let's take a look at um, one of those here. So here's somebody on megaupload.com. Let's drill down on this and see what's happening. So we've got here the source. Let's get the username as well for the full picture. So we've got Bill who's logged onto this system. He's on our proxy. He's accessing megaupload.com. Date and time, how much data. So it looks like lots of small downloads. So if you've got proxies, the Langarnian's DPI engine can extract out the website name from proxy traffic. So there's some of the key ways you can use the Langardian data within SolarWinds Server and Applications Monitor. If you need more information about the Network Langardian, please visit our website, www.network.com.